Howdy folks, thanks for checking in to Mr. Ulrich's LandBiology.com. I am Mr. Ulrich. In this video, Nodecast, we're going to be looking at an introduction to taxonomy and evolution. Of course, we couldn't look at taxonomy and evolution without discussing these two heavy hitters, Carolus Linnaeus and Charles Darwin. <clears throat> now, Charles Darwin, of course, is uh, famous for bringing evolution into more of a public eye, I guess. Uh, evolution, most uh, succinctly described as change over time, is not Charles Darwin's um, contribution, shall we say. Uh, the idea that, that uh, the earth had changed over time, and indeed that organisms change over time, was not uh, his first discovery. He came up with a, or synthesized an explanation for how that takes place through natural selection and uh, hypothesized that we share a common ancestor with this character, uh, the chimpanzee. It was Carolus Linnaeus who gave us the system, uh, a much more uh, usable system to uh, uh, give the chimpanzee its name, Pantroglodytes, um, because taxonomy, of course, is uh, systems of classification and naming. This video, we're going to focus on uh, taxonomy, and we'll we'll get to Charles Darwin, natural selection, and evolution in other videos. Some people recognize that taxonomy sounds a little bit like taxidermy. Taxidermy is the art of taking organism skins and ranging them into different uh, positions and stuffing them. Uh, the taxi part of taxidermy, that's the arranging, and the dermy is the skin. So you literally arrange skins. In taxonomy, what we're going to arrange uh, are the nomies. That's the name. So uh, taxonomy is how we arrange things and how we give them their names. Now, we've been doing this for a while. Aristotle, credited with being rather bright, uh, he put organisms into groups like whether they laid eggs or not, um, whether they had seeds or not, uh, those types of things. Other people use how they moved. Of course, we run into some problems with both of these because, uh, especially with how they move, because you get the, you know, if we're going to classify things as walkers, flyers, or swimmers, and then we get into things like ducks, and uh, since they do all three, so where do we put those? So uh, these systems are not exclusive. Uh, the groupings of them are not exclusive, so there's too much overlap. Not very useful. So these different classification systems weren't very usable. Uh, this guy, uh, Carolus Linnaeus, or Carl von Linné, he was a Swedish monk. Uh, he came along and developed a different way of organizing organisms into different groups. His system was hierarchical, meaning that he, they were kind of nesting. Uh, uh, he broke organisms up based on their physical characteristics or morphology into um, large groups uh, called kingdoms, which would be like plant and animal kingdom. Uh, these different kingdoms were broken up in his day uh, into different genera, which is the plural for genus. So uh, in kingdom, there would be a lot of variety, um, like in the animal kingdom, both humans and sponges are in the same kingdom. Um, so there's a lot of variety. The, the similarities between us and sponges uh, are pretty general. Uh, we get down to the genus level, these organisms in the same genus are going to, uh, there'll be some variety amongst them, but uh, they're going to be pretty, pretty darn similar. Uh, these different genera are broken up into species, um, and the organisms within, within the species would be very similar, most specific, able to uh, interbreed with one another. So if you remember back from when you were learning about kingdoms and genuses and species, uh, it's hard for me to even say genuses, genera, kingdoms, genera, and species, that we skipped a couple of groups. Uh, that's because we've, uh, the Linnaean system, we still call it the Linnaean system, um, but we've made it better. Modern science has built upon the Linnaean system uh, by including more taxonomic groups, uh, refer to these as taxons, Here's a few examples of different types of taxons. Uh, nowadays, taxons are still based on physical characteristics, just like uh, the Linnaean taxons were or are, 
Um, but they also include evolutionary relationships. So uh, we include things like uh, DNA analysis and looking at fossil evidence um, and material like that. And we'll talk more about that as the unit progresses. Uh, but by uh, looking at these physical characteristics and evolutionary relationships, um, we've developed a uh, Linnaean system that includes these major groups, um, the domain, which is a, a relatively new one, uh, broken up into kingdoms, which are broken up into phyla, which are broken up into classes, orders, family, genera, and species. Um, you can come up with any kind of mnemonic device that you'd like to. I remember learning Kings Play Chess on Friday, generally speaking, uh, taking the first letter from each one of those. And now that we have Domain, that relatively new one, um, you can just turn it into a question. Do Kings Play Chess on Friday, generally speaking? And you can play around with that and come up with whatever mnemonic device you would like to. Um, you know, whatever makes it more memorable to you. Mem more memorable to you. Um, is uh, is best. We need to remember that the domain is the most general and and the species is most specific. In fact, that's where the word species come from, being very specific. Well, that's probably enough for this time around. Thanks for checking in. I'm Mr. Ulrich, and if you have any feedback or questions or comments or concerns, uh, feel free to email me there at my email address. Um, of course, by all means, if you didn't get to this video by going to my website, uh, check out my website. It's got all kinds of other handouts and uh, tasty niblets and things that, that might help you uh, along. Other than that, like I said, thanks for checking in. We'll see you in class.